For ZDNet, I'm Dan Patterson, and today's conversation is with Pascal Kaufman. He is the founder of the MindFire Group and a leader in AI. Pascal helps us better understand these kind of revolutionary applications like ChatGPT and the steps towards a buzzword you're probably hearing a lot about. That's AGI, Artificial General Intelligence or Human Level AI. Pascal talks about the steps to get there and uh, when this might happen. Now, the conversation that we had was recorded right before the emergence of GPT-4. That's this new model in ChatGPT that's kind of revolutionary. And he talks about uh, this rapid iteration and what could change, what could happen very quickly with AI. It's a fascinating conversation. If you're like me, you've been kind of blown away by these rapid advances in artificial intelligence uh, and especially generative AI like chat GPT. Um, but I, I kind of always wonder if these platforms are kind of parlor tricks. Like, is it really good at natural language processing and just kind of spitting back stuff that looks good? Uh, or is this a next step in the evolution of artificial intelligence kind of on this path to what experts call AGI, artificial general intelligence. Uh, that's AI as smart as humans. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation, uh, but today we are talking to Pascal Kaufman. He is the founder of the MindFire Group, and he is an expert in not just artificial general intelligence, but uh, all of the component pieces that create uh, what we kind of think of as sentient. So, Pascal, thanks a lot for joining us today. Um, let's let's start with the fact versus fiction of uh, Chat GPT. It is the hyped platform right now. Um, how intelligent really is this platform? Well, glad to be here, Dan. When you ask me about the quantification of intelligence, it's zero. And uh, this doesn't mean that it's super useful, that it's not super useful, but intelligence wise, it's zero. Uh, how, how do you define intelligence? What, what is intelligence? Yeah, that's a very important question because if we do not define intelligence, how could we say that it's zero? So we need to have a measure for that. And interestingly, there are some people that treat the term AI like amazing innovations. Uh, so whenever something is amazing, it's called AI then of course it would be super AI. But when you are looking at the scientific um, perspective, you can actually measure and define intelligence. So intelligence would be measured as the great or your capability of dealing with unseen problems, unencountered problems. Can you solve something that's completely novel and uh, a lar large language models or like ChatGPT is not able to tackle anything that it hasn't encountered before. Therefore it's zero. Uh so what is the path from here to these, you know, big speculative, uh, you know, robots as smart as humans? Is there a path or is this simply kind of a blip on the radar? You know, like to, there are a few camps in AI. Some people are completely blown away by, uh, by LLMs, by these large language models. Other people say it's actually obstructing the pathway towards um, AGI. And um, I belong to the second camp. I think the ChatGPT models, they are useful tools towards reaching uh, general artificial intelligence, but it's like building a large ladder or a high ladder. When you have a, a high ladder and you like to reach the moon, that seems like progress, right? But actually you can uh, build ladders that are maybe a few hundred meters high, but then that's it. And the same is a little bit uh, true for like the ChatGPT systems they seem as if they were intelligent, but actually they're just mimicking something. And there, there's a dead end if you will pursue that pathway. So I think using ChatGPT accelerates progress in science, but it is not a direct pathway from ChatGPT towards anything similar as AGI. When you see um, like New York Times stories or other um, uh, media stories talking about um, these conversations that they have uh, where the artificial intelligence appears smart and it's hallucinating and it says it wants to be free. Um, what, 
what is this phenomenon? Like, what are we actually seeing here? Is this just a dead end and it's kind of bumping up against that? Uh, why, why do these programs seem to produce this um, uh, weird type of behavior? Yeah, it's very interesting to see how people react to these, um, to these systems. 250 years ago, there, is, uh, there were the first humanoid robots. They were actually built in Europe and Switzerland. And these were like automaton, like, like puppets. They seemed to be like small humans. And they were able to actually play chess. It's called the Chess Turks. And when you watched them playing chess, People are actually very scared. They say, whoa, they're human level intelligent. They can even beat chess masters. And they did all these wild speculations. When will there be artificial emperors? When will uh, like humans replaced by these machines? But they were just like me mechanical wonders of technology, not able to do anything more. And the discussions these days in, New York, in the New York Times and in other journals remind me a little bit of these uh, happenings like 250 years ago. We are blown away. Some people say they are hallucinating. Other people say they are maybe sentient. But exactly the same was true 250 years ago when they looked at the very first humanity robots. So the AI story repeats itself again and again. Just because many people have the impression something intelli is intelligent, it doesn't mean that something is intelligent. Well, what are the actual practical business purposes, applications of chat GPT like tools or generative AI tools? Well, there I'm completely blown away. I think it's a revolution in usefulness. These chat GPT systems, they completely change the way how we work. So I think it's not a technological revolution, but it's actually a usefulness revolution. We put together existing pieces and build a super useful tool. So for example, uh, this morning I asked uh, someone to create a batch for like a project that means like a visual work. Usually I paid about 2000 US dollars to get such a batch and I had to wait for one week. That person actually returned to work within like 20 minutes and I was blown away. So it just, it, this person just indicated the, the scenery that I need and through generative AI, I got the perfect uh, visual scene and I could use the batch instantly. So the speed, the acceleration is enormous. And also it deloads your brain. I mean, I don't need to solve questions. I just need to ask the right questions. And uh, that's completely changing how people behave and how people uh, work. So I think that's fascinating. And it will be the bigger um, technical revolution than like deep learning or machine learning. Many people would agree that the chat GPT systems, the LLMs, will be hailed as a, a big revolutionary breakthrough uh, when it comes to technology. Are there industries that will be impacted first? Yeah, interestingly, um, we were wrong about that the, the low level jobs, the routine jobs will be first taken away by the machines. Actually, it seems that the more creative jobs are, are taken away. So the first jobs, of course, the illustrators, or also I would say actors, when you want to do a Hollywood movie, why paying a super expensive human being if you could just generate um, a virtual human being that can actually do all kind of, of, uh, of scenes, that can do all ty type of mimics. So I think also Hollywood will be under tremendous pressure at some point in time. Everything that has to do with text, creating text, even creativity. I did a test. I asked five human beings a very uh, fancy question a question that hasn't been uh, put into Google. I'll give you an example. You have an U-boat, you have a dog, and you have an elephant in a room, and you have a banana hanging on the ceiling. How would you use these instruments to get the banana? When you ask these five human beings this question, and when you ask ChatGPT, it is surprisingly that ChatGPT comes up with much more and much more creative solutions than the human beings, because there's a huge reservoir to extract the uh, uh, solutions from. So I think even when it comes to creativity, chat GPT will beat uh, human beings. Well, you have spent uh, your career focused on this big question of intelligence and sentience and um, MindFire, uh, the the, not just the company, but the group, the organization, the intellectuals that you work with are kind of trying to solve these big problems, not just the practical problems of artificial intelligence. In fact, you just won a world record in AI. Can you tell me what a world record in AI looks like? What is this? 
Yeah, first of all, you need to agree how to measure intelligence. And that's actually not an easy um, task. It was uh, François Jolet, um, a Google engineer who wrote the paper in 2019 about how to measure intelligence. So it's actually mathematically formal how you could do that. And he basically says, you measure the ability to cope with unseen new problems. And the less information you need, the, the, the fewer data points you need, and the faster you achieve to have a solution, the more intelligent you are. Now there are so-called IQ tests for intelligence, not only for human beings, but also for machines. And this test has been tackled by Kaggle, like Google's community of about 10 million programmers around the globe. And in 2020, those uh, several, so thousand plus teams of Kaggle reached a percentage of 20%. So meaning if you present 100 riddles, 100 puzzles to the uh, state of the art algorithms, only 20 out of 100 could be solved. And uh, what Mindfire achieved is we also united a lot of people around the globe. And in 2023, we upped that world record uh, by combining solutions to over 30%. So in the AI field, measuring intelligence is very important, but it's completely different from deep learning or machine learning. It actually has been proven that by deep learning or machine learning, you cannot solve these uh, uh, problems. Uh, so tell me what the the next... Uh, three years, five years, 10 years of artificial intelligence looks like. From this perspective, it kind of feels like a revolution uh, or maybe the early days of Google and search algorithms or the early days of social media um, or even the early days of the telephone um, or computing. Contextualize, help me understand the space that we are in right now with artificial intelligence. Is this a blip or is this a revolution? I actually asked about 20 leaders of, uh, of large AI labs in Europe. Is it a Sputnik shock? Like, is it something uh, monumental or is it just a hype, this emergence of ChatGPT? And uh, uh, the majority said they were completely blown away. They were completely surprised how impactful this ChatGPT technology is. So I really think it's a revolution. It's a usefulness revolution. And I think you already can feel it, that the momentum is increasing, that the temperature is increasing, actually, that a lot of um, developments are accelerating. I heard that next week, ChatGPT4 uh, will be presented. Uh, it would be multimodal, uh, as all the saying goes. So multimodal means not only text or, or pictures, you can actually also have video scenes. You can generate music. Microsoft will release that next week. And then actually there will be more systems building up uh, on top of that. So huge, huge new developments in just a few weeks time. This is really a revolution and it will accelerate the um, developments towards human level AI. It will not be the technology like ChatGPT uses, the LLMs, but it will definitely accelerate our uh, developments towards human level AI. I'm Dan Patterson, and for more interviews like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And to get the latest in emerging technology innovation, please do visit ZDNet.com.